Welcome everyone to another Mixed Media Tuesday. I grabbed here just some of the journals that I'm currently working on and sometimes I work on uh, very small journals like this one for example or I even create my own like this tag one. I even work on this uh, just collage journal that I post daily on my Instagram account as well as on 6x6 six six, uh, journals. This is another one where I mainly work on loose pages and then put them back together in this uh, binder. I do have my Dilutions journal which is my absolute favorite and here is a spread that I did a couple of weeks ago and here is another one, a square one, where I like to stick on top loose pages that I work on. I like to switch in between all all those different types and I have even more I think but I do that because it helps my creativity just changing the proportions or just changing the type of journal is always helpful let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite for today I decided to work on a square loose page which I'm then going to stick on this book this is an older art journal by art by Marlene I like to create loose pages that I stick on top to keep everything together but this is thick watercolor paper and of course you can work directly on that however this is an old uh, art journal and I think it is now discontinued if I'm able to locate it somewhere I will leave a link down below so for today the inspiration comes from the Magnolia Hughes uh, collection. This is a collection from uh, Dress My Craft. I did an unboxing video where you were able to see everything from this collection and uh, if you remember I was in love with this door so now is the day that I'm going to finally use it in one of my pages. Now there are different sizes of this door depending on which product you have so here you can see the 6x6 one there are those loose uh, pages that you can cut out elements from and uh, you see you get two sizes of this door and let me open up the 12 by 12 so you can see all the different options that you get from this collection. So depending on which uh, size of a page of an art journal you are working on, you can choose whatever works best. So for example, if I was working on this tiny one, I would go with the smallest of the doors. So for today's page, I'm going to pick a few pages. I am of course going to separate the door, which is going to be the focal point of today's spread. And then I'm going to pick a couple more pages. I will go with the one that looks like a wood crane at the background. I like this one because it uh, is quite neutral. And I'm also going to pick this pattern paper as my background. So I'm going to cut this to be a square and that's slightly smaller than my 8x8 uh, journal so that I can easily stick it on top and leave a little border like I did with the rest of the spreads. Now with that pattern paper I'm going to make sure that it is even smaller so if the first one was about seven and a half by seven and a half so I think this is about six and a half by six and a half. Now first I'm going to work on the pink background and I'm going to do some stamping. There is stamping already so it looks nice and interesting however I'm going to do heat embossing and I will use white embossing powder so this way I will end up having some text which will remain bright white even if I tint the background with some sprays so I'm going to apply my white embossing powder and then heat set it you can't really tell the difference at the moment however if I apply my sprays on top you will definitely see that white embossing and now I move the page into my spraying box and I'm going to use a couple of Distress Oxide sprays. The first one is Wilted Violet, the other one is Vintage Photo. I'm just lightly applying a little bit of spray, it's going to be absorbed by the page, it's not going to look as vibrant as it is at the moment, remember this is Oxide spray. I just wanted to add a light tint and I didn't want to overwhelm the page with color. Now we will do some stamping using the same stamp. By the way, this is a stamp from The Essentials by Studio Light. It is an older collection. I don't know if it is still available. If I can find it somewhere, I will link it down below as well. And I'm going to do some stamping with this text stamp. And if you noticed, I did use it with a stamping block previously in the other pattern paper. However, here I want it to look more organic. I don't want to have perfect stamping. So I'm doing everything with my fingers. 
And to add even more texture and interest on the background, I'm going to do some stenciling with my embossing paste. This is my bricked stencil by Tim Holtz, super old but very loved one. I go back to it again and again. Again here I'm making sure that nothing looks perfect, I don't want to go for the perfect rectangle. And I'm going to leave this space empty since I know that this is where I'm going to stick the door later on. Now if you follow my videos you know that I like to mix different sizes of fonts, so here I'm using a smaller font and I'm stamping again, pretty much on top of where I stamped previously. And I also grabbed one of my circle stamps to add some uh, circle elements as well. These are my go-to stamps lately that I use on pretty much every page. And let's do some spraying on this page as well. Here I'm mainly going to work with vintage photo. I didn't apply too much but I'm going to apply water now which is going to help all that color to move around. Now this paper has kind of a coating, a satin coating on top of it, which makes the page non-porous. Well, it is porous, but it's going to give you some time to move the um, water around. As you can see here, it doesn't absorb that uh, ink directly. So I have some playtime here before everything is soaked into the page. And I'm going to add a little bit of that purple again, help it to move around. And again, remember, nothing is going to look as vibrant as it looks now. These are oxides diluted with water, so they are going to end up really pale. Now I'm going to use a blending brush and with my black, jet black archival ink, I'm going to ink up the edges. I like uh, darker edges on many of my projects. I feel like it frames my work somehow. And I'm also going to distress the edges. You can do that with a distress tool or with your scissors. I'm also cutting out a few notches in a couple of places, which are going to give more interest at the end. This is actually a technique that I go back to from time to time. I like to create those notches because they allow for an area to add elements peeking through. And it's time to stick those two backgrounds that I created together, one on top of the other, just by using glue. I also didn't add the glue all the way to the edges. This way I do have some lifting off the edges and at the same time I can always tuck behind other elements if I choose to. I'm going to stick the door down, nice big focal point. Again by using my white glue. And now it's time to do some fuzzy cutting. I'm going to cut out some of those magnolias as well as lots of the leaves and one of the birds. I'm going to take my time. I just put on my music and do some fuzzy cutting. And I also made sure that I didn't leave white border. I don't like that sticky look when it comes to my original spreads. So I just avoid it. And I will use all those cutouts to embellish my spread. I'm sticking everything down with my white glue. And if you are enjoying my videos, don't forget to click the like button. It is really important. It really makes a difference for any YouTuber that you like. I'm going to put on some music as I stick all those different elements together. And then I will cut you back for the finishing touches. For my quote, I will use this alphabet tie. This is one of my favorites that I have found recently. It's from Scrabbook.com and you get both the capital and the lowercase. They have a whimsical look and feel that I absolutely love. I'm going to cut out the word uh, now and the word 
doors so that uh, I will be able to put together my quote that says open doors and embrace new opportunities. If you follow my work for a while, you probably know by now that I like to combine different fonts and sizes for my quotes. So I usually pick one or two words from my quote to make them bigger and bolder. And for the rest of them, I just go with a smaller font. For the smaller strips, you can go with your printer. I just choose to go with my label maker. I find it super handy. These are self-adhesive. So I'm just uh, peeling off the packing and I'm going to stick them kind of nested in between the rest of the words. And you'll probably know what's coming next. I'm going to use my thin black pen and I'm going to outline those white strips. And of course then I'm going to bring in my white gel pen to add some highlights. I will add highlights on the black letters as well as on some of the cutouts. And there is one of my go-to techniques that I haven't done yet, which you probably know what it is, white splashes. So here I used just a dot of white acrylic paint, I dilute it with water and now I'm adding splashes all over the place, just little details like this one that you end up having on every element will bring all those things together. And now let's put that into my art journal, I'm going to just stick it with glue. And that was the project for today, I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired, just like always you will find links to all the products that I used down below in the description area. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.